prostitute. William Hart, she seizes him and kisses him. Come, let us take our fill of love till the morning. Let us delight ourselves with love, for my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. Obviously, if you find this information in a book that your son is reading, you will not allow him to read. You will tell him this book is no good. Here is another book about some other stories that don't contain uh, sexual content. So obviously, and I'm only quoting, believe me, very limited things. I, I, I don't want to go to the things that are way more uh, offensive or even more depressing to, to, to say that these are, this is inspired by God, you know, but these are among some. There are similar examples which I will not quote, and I did not memorize them because I do not see any benefit in memorizing such statements because they are clearly not from God. So that's why I'm reading from the paper. Uh, the Songs of Solomon, in uh, chapter 4, verse 1, there's a, uh, it's all about flirtation, you know, uh, something that is just way beyond me to, to quote. Furthermore, we have some contradictions, unfortunately, such as the genealogy of Jesus. Actually, it's of Joseph. In Matthew chapter 1, verses 18, it says that the genealogy of Jesus, the genealogy of Jesus contains 28 names of his fathers. Father of Joseph is Jacob. Okay, 28 names, and finally it says that the father of Joseph is Jacob. In Luke chapter 3, verses 23, and the genealogy of Jesus, it contains 42 different names. And if you know mathematics, the difference between 28 and 42 is how much? 14 maybe, 28 plus 12 is 30, that's 40, something like that, 14. Of the fathers of Jesus that we find in Matthew that the father of Joseph is Hela. So now, we have two biblical texts, one saying that the father of Joseph is Jacob, and one says it's Hela, H-E-L-I, that's one of the ways it is pronounced. So then a person may ask, then who is the father? Which one do we take? That in Matthew or that in Luke? And if the Bible was inspired by God through the Holy Spirit to the scribes who are writing it, which one was getting more inspiration? Which one made an error? Is it possible that both are correct? Can your father be Muhammad and Rabi at the same time? And they're two different individuals? Logically, no. Now you can try to try to zigzag your way around there, but at the end of the day, you know, people don't digest that kind of stuff. So uh, this is an indication that the Quran, although the Christians believe in the books, they believe in the current books that they have is inaccurate because they believe in books which have not been preserved by God. They've had human beings add their own opinions, ideologies, and you know their own uh, theological understanding of things based on their denomination. When you read the Quran, Allah says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُ فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Do they not reflect upon this Qur'an? Had it been from other than Allah, they would have found within much contradictions and differences. SubhanAllah. Re reflect upon the Qur'an, you will not find what I just quoted earlier. An indication that if you do find contradictions within the book, it is no longer from God. So that the only people who truly believe in the scriptures of God are the Muslims, because we believe in the Quran and the Gospel of Jesus, which we do not have, and the Torah of Moses, which we do not have, and the Psalms of David, which we do not have, and the scriptures of Abraham, which we do not have. But we believe. Whereas the other side, they reject the Quran, which cannot be rejected, which should not be rejected, 
which if someone does reject it, he has guaranteed destruction for himself or herself in this life and in the hereafter. Because they are rejecting a, re a revelation from God. Furthermore, they affirm and accept scriptures which they attribute to God, although when they read them they find content similar to what I quoted to you, which does not, your mind does not allow you to believe that God will be quoting the incident of a woman telling a man, come to my house, my husband is not at home. And other things which I will quote when we come to the belief in the messengers. So really, you make the judgment. I'm only presenting information. And I don't want to uh, you know, go beyond that. I just want to present information with some elaboration if necessary. So we've dealt with the belief in God, the belief in the angels, and the belief in the scriptures. Then what about the belief in the messengers? The messengers of God. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he described his messengers, he says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةً يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا وَأَوْحَيْنَا لَهُمْ فِعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ وَإِقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيْتَاءَ الزَّكَاةِ وَكَانُوا لَنَا عَابِدِينَ And, uh, what was the house of verse again? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hey. And we have made them leaders, who, the prophets and the messengers, we have made them leaders, guiding by our commands. And we inspire to them the doing of righteous deeds and the establishment of the prayer and paying the charity and they were ever worshippers to us. This is their definition. First, they were chosen by Allah. They were leaders. They were guiding the people by the command of Allah. They were examples to be followed. They were the first to establish the prayer and pay the charity. And they were the first to be among those who were servants to Allah. This is a very fundamental definition. Because when you say you believe in the prophets and the messengers, then they are the people who you must follow. They are the manual. The manifestation of the manual. It's like you buy a bicycle that is disassembled or unassembled. Okay, it's just parts. Then you buy the manual. And the manual it says, you know, uh, it has the parts named, you know, number one, number two, number three, what have you. Then you get number one, you put it with number two, and they may show you some images and what have you. But still, what's the easiest thing? Is that they send with the manual a DVD. Huh? You pop it in, and it shows you someone doing the back part in front of you. He says, hold this, you hold that. Do this, you do, you do the same thing he's doing in slow motion, chances are you're going to get this bicycle assembled accurately. Because you're, you're not, there's no room for confusion. Really, this is the similitude of the messengers. The book is the manual, the revelation is the manual. The messengers were a living example, a live example for you to follow. Because you may read that you must establish the prayer, but how do you do that? Do you innovate a, a, a method of your own? Then, it must be according to the way the Prophet or the Messengers did it. It must be according to the way of the Prophet or the Messenger. So obviously, the Prophets and the Messengers are a live example. Here comes another sensitive point. Bear with me with this one. Here are some of the quotations from the Bible describing the Prophets and the Messengers. In Genesis chapter 9 verse 21 it says, Noah drank of the wine and became drunk and lay uncovered in his tent. And Ham, which is his son, saw the nakedness of his father. Now just bear with me. The definition in Islam, examples to be followed, the first to do worship, the, to worship Allah and do good deeds, they were guiding the people by the command of Allah. Now how is it then that a prophet will be getting drunk, then getting naked, then lying down on the ground, where a son walks in and he sees his father laying naked on the floor? How are the people 